know, when you think about it, <clears throat> think about when, when you're in high school and there's one thing that causes everyone to pay attention. If a fight breaks out, everybody comes and watches. There's something about that conflict that attracts attention. This could become a picture that people will pay attention to and ultimately point people to the gospel. Since we planted one church, I've met so many people and as I've gotten to know people and heard their stories, I just realized everybody's in a fight. And some of the fights are obvious, like addiction, uh, if you're addicted to drugs, alcohol, pornography, you're obviously in a fight. Marriages that are about to fall apart, uh, you're obviously in a fight. If you're fighting a disease, you're in a fight. Uh, if you've gone bankrupt, if you've lost your job, you're in a fight. There's some obvious fights, but the more I talk to people, the more I realize everybody's in some sort of fight. It may be a fight for your faith, you know, fighting doubt, fighting demons from your past, uh, fighting your past failures or mistakes. Um, issues, things that have happened to people, just everybody in one way or another is battling something. And I just thought a boxing match, a fight, is an, really a, a powerful picture of this. I wanted to create a, a conflict that when people look at it, they would see themselves in that conflict. I'm gonna turn my hips in, try to dig the shin right underneath his chin, and I'm gonna redistribute my weight across his ch chest that when they would see me boxing, that they would see themselves fighting whatever they are fighting. You're all right, come on, jab. Keep it going, keep it going, come on, jab. There you go, good, there you go, good. Hey, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's intimidating. Sometimes it's exhausting. But I'm gonna stay the course. So that was the whole point, was to inspire people to keep fighting or to start fighting whatever it is that's in front of them. I think every guy wants, wants to box. At some point, this idea was like this abstract thing out there. Hey, what if I did it? What if I tried it? What if? At some point, I had to make the decision, yes, I'm going to do it. If you're just coming in and you're confused and wondering what in the world's going on, uh, let me clarify for you. We are doing a group of messages that we're calling The Fight. The whole premise, the whole idea behind this is that all of us are in a fight. My initial reaction was, wow. We're doing this series of messages and we got a few different things we're doing and one of them is we're going to be actually doing a, uh, I'm going to be doing a boxing match at the end of the month. Yeah, you know, it was just like, I've never seen anything like this. I don't even know where to start. Today we're going to just kind of talk all about this, like what it's all about and, you know, why is the pastor fighting and all that weird stuff. Some of you came, you're like, what is going on? What kind of weird dysfunctional church did I just walk into that they fight? Yeah, that was probably the one time I just thought, you're, you're crazy. <laughs> My wife wasn't crazy about this idea. I, I was a little freaked out at first. She said she likes my face the way it is right now. I like the way he looks. It's a little selfish on my part, but I like the way he looks. She was apprehensive. When he first brought it up though, I was not sure how I felt. <laughs> but she knows me well enough to know that um, when I have an idea like this, I'm gonna do it. And I know how Greg works. If he's already got an idea deep in his brain and deep in his heart, it's gonna be hard to talk him out of it. It's a lot easier to get forgiveness than permission. I could see over time that she saw how seriously I was taking it, that I was going, I was training a lot and that I was working hard. He was starting to get ready. I saw how serious he was taking it. It wasn't like he was just gonna go in and, hey, hope this goes well. And as I was learning things, I could see her becoming more comfortable. And so then I, I started to feel more and more confident about it. And less and less like I was gonna throw up. <laughs> she saw my confidence building and when she saw my confidence building, her confidence was building as well. And so slowly she's getting more and more comfortable with the idea. But it took some work, and I owe her one, or two. 
Sometimes God would ask the prophets to do weird things, okay? I'm talking weird, like stuff you wouldn't even think would be talked about in church, okay? The prophets would be asked to do, and it would create a spectacle, and people would look at them like, what are you doing? Let me give you an example, okay? This is in your Bible, okay? Hosea chapter 1, Hosea chapter 1, starting in verse 2, says, When the Lord first began speaking to Israel through Hosea, he said to him, go and marry a prostitute. I'm just glad I got the boxing assignment. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Greg fails to tell part of this story. We, We actually went down in the basement the other day. I put on the headgear. I was wearing a dress. And I just put gloves on her, she gloved up, and I just said, hit me as many times as you can. And he wouldn't even give me time to go change. So she was chasing me all around the basement trying to knock my head off and I'm just playing defense, avoiding her. Move around, try to like chase me down and, and I'll try to block and I'm like, what, what the heck? Like, I'm not, this is getting way deeper than I signed up for. But let me tell you something, when you're like swinging and punching at somebody with no fear of getting hit back, you get real cocky. Then I start coming at him, I'm feeling good, I'm landing a couple big shots, I catch him in the ribs once real good and he tags me. So a couple times I had to kind of tap her on the face just to let her know what's up. Not a hard hit, not a hard hit. Just to (laughs) put everybody at ease. She's got a good left hook. I'm just kidding. But I wouldn't mess with her. He's good at roping me into things that I didn't originally sign up for and it keeps getting deeper and more involved. I'd be more afraid of her than I am of me. Just a warning for anybody that ever gets approached by Greg to do anything, that's probably what's gonna happen to you, so. (laughs) Just gonna put that out there. (laughs) It's always more than you signed up for with Greg Ford. biggest guy that I know because I want to create this picture of an indomitable opponent. If you're in a real fight, that's what it feels like. If your marriage is in a crisis, it feels like a gigantic opponent. If if you're battling an addiction, it feels like it's indomitable. It feels like you can't win. You're intimidated to even try. Deciding not to fight is deciding not to win. If you just say, you know, I've got this thing, I know it's there, uh, it's been bullying me, it's been hovering around me, and you know what, I'm not going to fight it. What you've done is you have passively made the decision to lose. So I'm literally driving down the road, I'm probably an hour from Columbus, and I see this car whiz past me. I just look quickly, and I swear it was him. I, I thought it was him. You know, whenever him and I are in the same vicinity, You might as well hang it up. We're about to get a conversation going. And literally, as I was praying about this, this car whizzes by and I'm thinking, you gotta be kidding me. And then, you know, he started to talk about uh, the fight and how we're always in a fight. So the next day I walk in the gym, I probably hadn't seen Jimmy for like a few months. And then man, he gets this look in his eye and he's like, man, you know what? Will you get in the ring with me? So I'm asking him, I'm like, hey, was that you driving down the road? You know, and he's like, no, that wasn't me. So it's somebody that looked just like him, some other 6'6", 300 pound behemoth, you know, driving in this little car actually down 71. And before I even thought about it, I said, yeah, I'll do it. I started talking to him about the idea and he quickly said, I'll do it, I'll fight, I'll fight you. He didn't blink twice about how big I was. So then from there, that then I started working on my game plan. And here we are. (laughs) It starts with a big decision to say, I'm gonna engage in this fight, but then there are like a thousand daily decisions.
You got to get out of bed. You got to keep doing the right thing. You got to keep moving forward. You got to keep walking. You got to keep persevering. When you struggle to persevere, it says in Hebrews 12, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter, the champion of your faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. Imagine getting a call from some pastor who's calling you saying, hey, I want a box for a sermon. You gotta be kidding me. He really was kind of confused by the whole thing. Yeah, you know, I just didn't believe it. I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, this guy's gonna come, he's gonna work out with me once or twice, and then he'll quit. But for whatever reason, he said, I'm, I'm gonna help this guy out. I said, well, let me see what kind of shape this guy's in. And Gary said, well, he's, he's in pretty good shape, he works out. You know, he played football, and I said, that's not the same type of shape. That's, it's, it's, it's a completely different ball game. And he took time out of his own schedule. I offered to pay him some money, and he said, I don't want any money. I just want to help you out. I said, okay, well, you know, I'll, I'll meet with him, and I contacted Greg, and I said, well, look. I said, I'm getting ready to go for a run. Why don't you come with me, and we'll go to Sharon Woods Park. It's a 3.8 miles around. So we met up over at this park, and we were going to run this, like, three-mile trail. I think he said to me, he goes, I don't think I've ever run that far. I'd been training, I'd been doing running on treadmills and uh, been doing a bunch of conditioning. If he went maybe 200 yards before he had to stop, after he would have been sitting there telling me how in good in shape he was. And he just takes off at a sprint. He's like, all right, we're gonna, he goes, we're gonna sprint. And he just starts running. So I'm like chasing him. I, I felt bad for him that first run. Then he slows down, jogs, and then he'll take off sprinting and I gotta catch him. We had to walk a lot of it. So we're probably like, I bet a quarter mile into this training session and I'm breathing like a freight train. I mean, I'm just like, <gasps> and, the, and, and he's not breathing hard. That usually caps it for guys. They're like, it's just not worth it. And they'll find some reason to not keep doing it. But he stuck with it. When you train and you push your body to the maximum and your, your lungs feel like they can't take in any more air and your muscles feel like they can't even lift themselves up, that at some point, if you say, you, you know, at the end of verse three, you can say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm out. I'm gonna, thank you, nice day, have a good one, and you're done. At that point, you stop growing. That's when you stop growing. But if you persevere, it says here, you persevere, what happens? Now your boundary just got stretched and you got better and your endurance grew and you, you, you grew. I'm gonna teach him some, just the basics right now. Like I talked about with him earlier, we just need to focus on a few basic skills. People think it's boxing like it's fighting, but it's boxing. There's, there's a difference between a fight and a boxing match. You know, a fight, you're going all out. Um, you're not thinking clearly. In a boxing match, you've got to prepare for it. You've got to be, you know, get your mind right. You've got to get your head in the game. You've got to learn certain skills to help you cope with it. And that's kind of what we're going to start working on today. Today for my training, Mike wanted me to come to a jiu-jitsu Muay Thai gym uh, to take me out of my comfort zone. That was not my favorite thing to do. I do not want to fight Muay Thai. I don't like grappling. I don't like being grabbed. I don't like being mounted. I don't want to mount anyone. It really was like, I don't want to do this. I don't like doing things that I'm not good at or that I'm uncomfortable with. And that made me even more adamant about him doing it. I don't like my joints being put in compromising positions. I don't like feeling like my elbow's gonna snap. You're only gonna get better. You're only gonna learn from this. So suck it up, deal with it. But. If Miyagi tells me to sand the floor, that's what I'm gonna do. You know, I find myself in, you know, down in this basement. Number one, it's a sweat box. It was in the middle of the summer, so you know, you're you're trapped into this thing. It's blazing hot, so I'm sweating all over the mat. I went from feeling like a fish out of water, learning to box, to developing some skills where I had some confidence, to going back to square one in a Muay Thai gym, knowing nothing. You know, when you look at it, I mean, that's where you build toughness, right? I mean, it's not just about strength, it's not just about skill, it's about toughness. And toughness is being in a situation you hate and getting out of it. It's not quitting when you wanna quit. I'm gonna face today's challenge and I'm gonna win today. Some of those days, winning today was just getting out of there in one piece. A lot of character was built in that basement. 
It doesn't matter how hard it gets. We just keep persevering. Listen, I, I gotta tell you, God is there. He's with you. He's alongside of you. He's empowered you, but you gotta do something. You have to get up. You gotta persevere and not stop because you do have a choice. <laughs> the night of the nose. I think this is awesome. I think, uh, I think, uh, Greg's gonna hurt somebody tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it doesn't surprise me that someone got hurt that night. As we were building our game plan, I knew I needed, needed to start sparring with some big people, with some tall people who were longer than, than I was and, and, and athletic people. So fortunately at our church, we have a lot of big people. So I, I, thought, um, I thought about Grant Loathes. I didn't even know anything really was gonna be going on. Greg just emailed me, hey, can we work out tomorrow night? Sure. We set up this time. It was like a Friday night that we were gonna spar over at Greg's over at Greg's barn. Little did I know, you know, I pull in and then all of a sudden Randy pulls in and there's a camera crew and I'm like, oh no, this is gonna be part of the documentary. Randy and Greg decided to, they said, hey, we're gonna work you guys out and get you really tired so you don't kill each other. Well, I knew that they needed to burn some energy. You don't want to ever spar like that with full energy. You don't want to just do a small warm up and then go spar. There's too much energy, there's too much power. There's just, you need to burn some of that off. Randy has us you know, getting loose, warming up, and, and Greg got pretty intense then. I knew uh, it was going to be an interesting night. So we're doing this workout. Randy's killing me. By the way, he tells Grant, hey, man, if you get tired, you can just stop. Grant's uh, cardio was not exactly where it needed to be to box. So that was a bit of a concern. <laughs> I'm like killing myself. I'm going hard on this bag. They got me doing cardio stuff. I'm flipping heavy bags. I let Grant stop and say, Grant, you just relax. I look and I see Grant just standing over on the side, catching his breath. I was more you know, worried about sparring than I was about the workouts. So I'm going to keep going with Greg here and, uh, and make sure he burns off some more energy. Jim Bell help up training right here. And I'm thinking, I know what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna wear myself out. Grant's gonna be fresh. Um, I'm not even gonna be able to hold my arms up here to be able to fight, and I'm gonna get my head beat in here. I'm about to get, you know, tagged all around this place. I'll be a punch him. I'm going. He, he gassed on the first round. I'm, I'm going as hard back. as I can. I'm. I only got six rounds of me. Honestly, I kind of didn't want to spar at that point because I was, I was thinking I was, you know, he's going to knock me around. I'll do whatever you tell me, but I'm just telling you I don't think I'll be, I mean, I'll stay in it. You're probably going to knock me out. We finally, you know, glove up and get, get ready to, to, uh, to spar. Control. Nobody's trying to knock anybody out here. Grant starts throwing some big shots at me. Go back and watch the tape. He threw some big hands at me, just barely missing my head. Yeah, you know, normally you kind of start off slow, but I kind of was ready to kind of get it going. And it just kind of woke me up. I won't say I lost it completely, but um, I definitely went into to fight mode. Nice control. <laughs> I knew I had something coming soon. And I just hit him with a left hand. It was just clean. I hit him straight in the nose, and I remember him kind of falling back. So I was behind Grant, so I didn't actually see it happening. I, if you see the video, I actually fell a little bit. So I'm standing there, and never in my life have I gone from beast mode to straight up compassion in a nanosecond. Greg stopped and was like, whoa, 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 whoa. So I turn around and I see, you know, Grant's nose next to his ear. <laughs> and I see his nose 
on the side of his face. I think Greg and uh, Randy were more traumatized because I couldn't see it, but they could see my nose on the my side of my face, so I think they were more freaked out. You all right, yeah. dude? Sorry, bro. Okay. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> so, I mean, it was like, it wasn't like I have a little bloody nose, it might be broke. It was totally rearranged on his face. And I felt terrible. I felt terrible. Sorry, Greg. Okay. I'm really sorry, buddy. I did not mean to do this. Okay. And then the, the funny part is, no, no one knew what to do. <laughs> we all stood there like, all right, now what? Um, Anybody know what to do about like that? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, it happens. Um, I mean, you gotta know what you're getting into when you put gloves on. Oh, crap, dude. Well, He's taking the hospital, bro. This sparring session's over. <laughs> Short night. We got a broken nose. Uh, Grant's nose got shifted over about three inches. Greg is also as equally nice as he is tough and uh, couldn't stop apologizing and he's taking Grant to the hospital right now. Dude, the worst part is Grant is the nicest guy I've ever met in my life. Like, I love Grant. He's a wonderful person. <laughs> I never wanted to do that to him. I, I probably apologized to him 10 times. Sorry, bro. Okay. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry, Greg. Okay. I'm really sorry, buddy. I did not mean to do that. Greg, I'm so sorry, buddy. I did not mean to do that. Sorry, buddy. You're okay. I feel terrible, buddy. I did not mean to do that. I mean, I just want to get some work. The last thing I want to do is break his nose. Well, no, I do tell people I'm about the only person I know that their pastors literally beat the hell out of. But other than that, I mean... So... Mike wanted me to experience what it would be like to, uh, to take a big shot in a fight. This little drill is one of my favorite ones to do to people when they're first starting out. Without actually hitting him really hard in the head and giving him a little bit of brain damage, in order to simulate your body not working and still having to function when you know it's not functioning right, I'm gonna have him spin in place for about 30 seconds till he's completely disoriented. He's like, I want you to spin around as many times and as quickly as you can in 30 seconds. 30 seconds doesn't seem like a long time until you spin around as fast as you can for 30 seconds. You know, a part of it is learning to take a punch. And um, that's a part of life. And then I'm gonna have him throw left, right, left, right, left, right, as fast as he can, as many times as he can. While he's trying to keep his feet underneath him, you'll start to see why boxers start stumbling around a lot after they've been hit. This actually might be kind of funny because sometimes guys go flopping all over the place. Pretty comical. I just gotta watch it that I don't get hit though because sometimes the punches go out of line. So I was completely disoriented. I didn't know which way was up, which way was down. I think he had to like tap me on the shoulder for me to even know where he was. You know, I'm watching him throw punches like this, and I'm going. I was totally disoriented. The only thing is though, a lot of people puke. You, I, you couldn't even see me. Don't puke right there. My phone's right there. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm okay. It's overwhelming, and that's what happens when you really do get hit it's it, the first couple times it's completely overwhelming and so mike says to me he says look man uh we're gonna do this again the second time when we did it and it was like okay just go right to those basics have a, a goal he said i want you to turn around i want you to get a solid base underneath you i want you to sink your butt and i want you to throw basic punches go right back to this boom 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 you've got to orientate yourself to do go back to your basics jab straight right I didn't think it was gonna work but we did it a second time and as soon as I turned around I just thought about keeping my mind focused keeping myself focused and, and staying as mentally tough as I could 
got a good base, sunk my butt, and went back to what I knew to do, throwing one twos. And when I went back to the basics and got a good base underneath me, I'm telling you, I got my bearings back within seconds. He was like a sponge like that, I gotta say. He was one of the best pupils when it comes to this I've had. That moment right there was a life-changing moment for me. Because think, think, about, think about the life application there. So life hits you with a sucker punch. Um, you wake up one day to find out that your spouse is unfaithful and you go through the pain of that. Think, you find out your business collapses underneath you. Uh, you, you lose your job. Um, somebody in your family dies suddenly or some, you find out somebody's sick or you're dealing with a disease, what, whatever it might be. Something just, boom, blindsided, punched. And what we tend to do in our human nature is when we've been hit, we were like that, right? The, the, the room is spinning around us, the world is spinning around us, so what do we do? We, we begin throwing reckless punches. We begin doing irresponsible things. And in those moments, what do we do? Maybe you return to an addiction that you haven't been to in a while. Maybe you jump into a relationship you know you shouldn't be in. You start participating in an activity that you know is only destroying you, but yet you're so confused and, and, and you don't know what's stable. So what, so what do you do? Reckless, foolish. You start listening to the advice of people that, that are not the people you should be taking advice from. In fact, if, if you had your bearings, you'd never listen to that person. You'd never do that thing, but, but here you are, you're spinning. What's the thing to do? Things that come back to your base. Come back to the basics. The quicker you come back to the healthy relationships, the quicker you come back to God's word, the truth, the thing that anchors you. When your feelings are confused, your feelings are, are disoriented, you come back to the thing that you know to be true. I get an, a text message from uh, my opponent, Jimmy. You'll never believe what just happened. And I was like, what question mark it was the curveball of the century i remember thinking what in the world is going on because oh shoot what 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 happened who's is anybody is everybody okay i didn't know what to do <sighs> i don't think there was even a thought my mind went blank and i could feel my heart just go and hit the floor like a stone at first you just kind of have to step back and just not react you kind of just have to step back and just kind of take it in a little bit and really just think about and process what is actually happening. He had the flu. Jimmy's backing out. I kind of went through the gamut of emotion. Like I was, I was mad, I was frustrated, um, all kinds of stuff. And my emotions were <laughs> starting to spill out and I just thought, you know what, this is not the time for that. You know, we can still save this thing. You know, God's still in control. We were all on edge, waiting to confirm what was gonna happen. Now I call a 911 meeting, man. I called all of our team together and everybody dropped everything they were doing. So I jumped in the car, I was driving to New Albany. That, that was probably the most formal, serious, official feeling meeting I've ever been a part of at one church. What's going on? fight canceled, somebody break an arm, you know, what is it? I felt like we were in the um, situation room and uh, at the Pentagon or at the White House and, uh, and Greg just looked at us and said, we got a little curveball. Guys, it looks like Jimmy's not gonna be able to fight. Um, we need to come up with a plan B. I want us to begin thinking about what are we gonna do? Like, if he does bail, like, I would rather us have some emails ready to go. Like, I don't wanna sound the alarm this second and call, because even, like, if I talk to him and he's like, dude, I'm out, what I'll, what I'll say is, dude, get, give it 24 hours. Like, let's talk again tomorrow. Just see, you might feel better tomorrow. I had a feeling in my gut that I knew this was the issue. This was on Wednesday, and the fight was on Sunday. I mean, we literally had everything solidified. You know, we had, had a year of planning going into this, tons of time. We were finally there and it wasn't gonna happen. We had yard signs up with, you know, Jimmy's picture on it and, you know, all this stuff online. Our, I think our um, fight trailer had like 4,000 hits or something on it. I think the biggest thing was that we had sold so many tickets. I think this was like, a, you know, a free event, a church service, but I mean, we had, 
you know, this was an official, legitimate event. I remember Greg checking his cell phone probably a hundred times in the first 20 minutes, um, sitting there at the end of the table, just just checking, waiting, waiting for the message. So we're in the middle of the meeting, and and Jimmy, Jimmy calls me. When the when the phone call came, we were all just like, okay, moment of truth. My first thing is to try to talk him into fighting. We've got print print pieces, and and uh, we sold over 500 tickets. I mean, we've got there's just so, there's so much on this man. If we if we go now, it's it. I mean, it's just the bottom will just fall right out of it. He just let me know that he felt like that he would really be putting himself in danger and that he could, you know, possibly pass out in the ring or, or he just really felt like he couldn't even bring himself into the ring. You're worried that if you we go and box on Sunday night that you're gonna get pneumonia? I remember just sitting back, just kind of laughing to myself, just listening to Greg try to talk Jimmy out of backing out. There's no way we can bail on this, I mean, I, it, it's just, I mean, we've got so much on it. I mean, we, we put our heart and soul into it. I mean, it's 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 Wednesday. I mean, it, the, are you not feeling like there's gonna be a recovery between now and, and Sunday? I mean, what if we shortened it to two minutes? You know, it's probably the longest, like, five minute phone call I've ever seen in my life. So, are, so is what you're telling me is that even if you get better because you've been sick this week, that you, you wouldn't do it no matter what, even if you felt better on Friday? in the process of trying to talk him into it, I realized that he just he just didn't feel like he could do it. And at that point, I just realized I, I needed to back off and, and go a different direction. I'm gonna be praying for you. I'm believing this is part of the journey and that, uh, that, that you're gonna be healed and, and ready to go, man. There's just, there's a lot more riding on this than just a boxing match. Postponing or canceling is not an option. So then what what's what is the next, you know, what is the next option? All right, man. We'll, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye bye. We had to immediately, you know, shift, you know, cut on a dime and come up with a new game plan. I think what we need to do is stick to our date. Um, my thought was, who then do you fight with this short of notice? When you're three days, three, four days out from a fight, you know, I've been training for six months. You know, I can't just go get another novice um, who's never fought before, you know, three days before the fight. That that would have completely defeated the purpose of why we're doing this. I figured the best case scenario would probably be the guy that I sparred with, that cop. police officer uh, in Upper Arlington. Uh, super athletic guy, big, physical, very good boxer, fluid, athletic. Because I've been doing drills with mitts and heavy bags, but they don't hit back, he does. progress I've been <clears throat> kind of doing some of the same stuff over and over again which is good because it's building up some of my skills and things like that but being in live action is uh, totally different you know what even if I go in there and get thrashed you know I would rather do that and endure and fight and persevere um, with this opponent because it fits the purpose of what we're doing hey dude um, do you, do you got about five minutes to talk? You know, he, he basically was just like, hey, I really need you. And, you know, with him, with, it was such a good cause of what he did, uh, you know, you know how he explained to me. I was just like, I'll do it regardless, you know. Hey, you're the man, dude. I, I can't thank you enough, dude. Absolute lifesaver. Of course, God knew what he was doing. I mean, this was his plan. He wanted me to fight Brian Brown and to pass the test of, of the curveball 
pass the test of when things don't go your way or you get surprised by something. And it just made this whole project, just made this whole project that much more real world. That it wasn't something that we just scripted out and everything went according to script and according to plan because that's not life. Life doesn't go according to plan. We have our budgets and our plans and all of that and stuff happens. And that's when God intervenes. That's when the Holy Spirit guides and leads and teaches us and builds things within us in that real world experience. And that's exactly where we were. Everything I was teaching and talking about on Sunday, God was making us live throughout the week. Yeah, that'll be a, that'll be a good beat. So then if Greg beats him, then Greg's a pro, right? <laughs> We're losing our masters. If I, if I beat him, <laughs> I'm a oh, pro. You need your championship oh, belt. Gosh, dude. I literally thought about what Mike taught me about keeping your wits about you when you get hit with a big shot. I was reeling. I was reeling. I didn't understand. I didn't know what was going on. What did I do? I went to, the, I went to Romans 8, 28, and I w I'd speak it out. Let me tell you this, remember. Romans 8, 28. Romans 8, 28. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love and are called according to his purpose. Just preached it two weeks ago. You get hit with a shot. You go back to the basics. I've come to that verse so many times in my life. Go back to the basics, Romans 8, 28. It's going to work out. I'm at peace with it. I'm, my, my nature, my humanity, my flesh is frustrated, but I'm at peace. You can't control a lot of the things that happens when you get a curveball, but you can control what you do. Never let people stop you from persevering towards your purpose. Never. Never. Notice Jesus, when he was going to the cross, didn't say, you know, I would have gone all the way to the cross, except my friends weren't there when I needed them. You know, I would have gone all the way to the cross, except these Jewish leaders, these Pharisees, you know, who supposedly know the Old Testament, apparently didn't read enough to know the prophecy that I'm the fulfillment of that. I've been stabbed in the back by the church. These people have hurt me. You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm not going to die for these people. No. He endured the hostility from sinful people and friendly fire. And he stayed in it. He persevered. Never let people stop you from pursuing and from persevering to the purpose that God has for you. Coming out of that meeting with the team, you know, knocked it out of the park. You know, everybody was on board. We, we found a plan. We found a backup. We weren't going to let this hiccup, this curveball that came at us derail our fight. We were there to have this fight and nothing was going to come in the way of that. Let me ask you, is the fight that you're in right now, is it the right fight? Because maybe you're, you're engaged in all kinds of conflicts with people and issues around you, and there's no purpose attached to it. Look, if there's no purpose, no, no deep purpose attached, some of these fights are worth just walking away from. Just lose, just lose the fight. You win. You win. I don't, I don't even care because there's no purpose attached to it. What the Apostle Paul shows us in 1 Corinthians 9 is he says, look, I've only, I'm human. I only have so much energy. I only have so many fights in me. I'm going to engage in the fights that are not shadow boxing. I'm going to engage in the fight that actually means something, that has a purpose attached to it, because some things are worth fighting for. this like anticipation it's here you know we've we've spent a year planning this and it's here i'm about ready to see my my pastor get punched in the face get punched in the ribs i feel like i'm ready to have a wedding and a baby all at the same time 
over over a year over a year of planning comes down to one day. The excitement level, the volunteer teams that were swarming everywhere, welcoming people and, and to watch, you know, my neighbors walk in, my coworkers come in to be there at the fight. People that had never been to church before, but you know, may or may not have been in a fight of their own, walking in to see that fight. The, you know, an hour before the fight, it felt like every second was passing slowly. One of the things I've learned about boxing is you want to keep your emotions under control as best you can. If you just get fired up and go in like a like you're in a barroom brawl, you know, you don't have your head and your wits and, and you're not executing what you're trying to do. So I didn't want to get my emotions up so high. I tried to keep myself calm throughout the day and just kind of meditate, relax. It's been a really cool past 48 hours because um, it kind of feels like back when I used to play sports, you know, the night before a big game. And then today, you know, in some ways kind of uh, felt like, you know, when I used to have a big game, but, but very different because back when I used to play, before I'd really given my life to Christ, Sports were my complete identity. So if I won, I felt like a winner. If I lost, I felt like a loser. So the idea of going into a battle and with the potential of losing was so scary because losses were so devastating to me. But I realized today that, you know, I've already won. So all the hard work, all the time that we spent out at the pavilion, we spent hours and hours in Greg's gym and his, uh, on his property, the hours working out at Urban Active, the times that I went and punched the bag when nobody was there, all the effort, just gonna go out and you know, let it all loose. The closer we got to the time, the more I could feel my heart was pounding. I was kind of not sure exactly what to do because I didn't want to warm up so hard that I went into the to the ring winded and tired. But I wanted to be nice and warmed up. So I was kind of warming up at about a medium pace, just trying to get my blood going, trying to make sure my arm was warm. Lock, jab, and then left hook. Okay. Good. Right hand. Yeah. Have a jab. Okay. Definitely, you know, the anxiety, the, the energy, all of it was really starting to build. Here we go. Here we go. No turning back. You know, there's no way to avoid this. I'm going head first into this thing. Okay. You got all pieces? Yep. yep. When I came around the corner, I saw Brian run out. So I'm like, all right, here we go. It's, it's about time. This dude looks so bad and so mean. I, I, I think I, I think all I could say was, dang, <laughs> I'm not getting in there. Well, <laughs> I knew Greg had his hands full. Ah, that was a little intimidating. That, wow, that, that guy was scary looking and he knew what he was doing. Incredible, I mean, just an incredible presence when he walked in the room. This is gonna hurt. I would have been, I would have been High tail at the other direction if I'm if I was Greg, but I'm not Greg. <laughs> and uh, we we're standing outside the door, and uh, Mike turns to me and he says, "We go out, we're ready to go out, and we are ready. We are ready. We've been working hard for this. We go out when we want to go out." He said, "Nobody's gonna tell us when to go out. 
We go out when we want to go out. It's on our terms. That's what it's all about, baby. All about. It's already won. The war is already won. This is just a battle. When I said that, I felt a measure of peace. And I felt, my, I felt confident. Feel like I'm gonna throw up not because I'm scared but just because the anticipation is killing me. I just remember the do both doors opening. In that one moment it was like part pastor, part fighter, part friend. Truly one of those moments where people talk about just supernatural peace. You know, not only is this guy my, my boss and my leader, but he's also my pastor, you know, the guy who's, you know, for the past few years been there for me and my lowest times and my highest times has been just an incredible pastor um, and mentor. Um, presence in my life and also you know the fact that he's you know one of my closest friends as well I was nervous um, knowing what he was feeling you know, I'm just imagining Greg's what what's going through his head I know this sounds weird and I even hesitate to, to say it and we don't have to use it necessarily but When I was walking, I was thinking about, I was thinking about what, <clears throat> I was thinking about what it must have been like for Jesus to walk to the cross. And to take that long walk and um, the significance, the significance of, of what Jesus did. And that when he was taking that walk, I mean, I had to imagine that Jesus knew that every step he was taking, he was getting one step closer to defeating sin that every step he took, that he was getting closer to fulfilling his mission, the mission given to him by the Father. What it would have been like for Jesus to, to walk to the cross feeling, feeling the weight of, of my sin and of all of our sins. And Hebrews 12 says that he endured the cross disregarding its shame, that he took that walk and every single step of that journey was getting him closer to his mission. What I did was tiny compared to what he did, but I felt a similar feeling of purpose. I'm flat out going to be obedient to this. I'm going to walk the walk and I'm going to execute the plan and I'm going to do what I'm called to do, period. Literally probably the hardest thing of the fight is actually getting in the ring. I knew what Greg had put into it, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. And he had given every last drop that he had. Here we go, I, that's what I said, here we go. There's no going back. We're here. You know, this thing's gonna happen. Greg came out like a raging bull. When he came out, he was ready to go. Pretty much 
what you call a bull. I wanted to let him know that this wasn't a game. He wanted to set a tone. I think it set the tone right at the top that this was no show. This was a real fight. I threw some 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 big shots. He's coming with the A game. I like that. He's actually got a chance. I think he really surprised Brian how much better he was than the time he had sparred. And with all that, you just got to make sure that you do the same thing. I kind of like getting hit. You feel alive. It wakes you up. You're like, all right, here, here we go. I hit him with a right hand straight. He was open for it. That moment of like, you could feel the crowd kind of go, oh. I just hit him solid, and I, you know, I could, I could feel his head rattle. It felt good. It felt really good to hit him. Kind of fun. It, was, it wasn't kind of fun. It was super fun. I'll be honest. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm sorry. Hey, good show. That was a good one. I tried to grab him, and he kind of shook me off, and then he came right down the pipe. So every once in a while, I throw that nice down the pipe. When you see someone get hit like that, it just reminds you all the time you've been hit like that. It's like, oh. That just really looked uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I heard the crowd like, oh, you know, when he hit me. You've not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. Like, I feel like you are in your corner and you're, you're like, this fight is tough. And your trainer's sitting there going, hey, hey, hey. You're not dead. You're not dead. You're doing good. Stay in there. Keep doing the right thing. Keep your hands up. Keep bobbing and weaving. Keep throwing those punches. You're landing some good punches. Hey, hey, I know you feel tired. I know you're tired. I know it feels chaotic. I know it feels like a tornado. I know it feels like at times you don't know what you're doing. Hey, hey, you're doing good. You're not dead. You've not given your life yet in your struggle against sin. You're good. Just keep fighting. I don't have any boxing career waiting on me after this. I, I got one shot at this. I'm going three rounds. Brian Brown just coming with this huge jab. I seen him open a little bit, so I was just like, I'm just going to throw that out there. Last second, and Greg ducking out, it would have been over. It would have been lights out. Well, I thought that he left himself open when he ducked over. I was just like, okay. If you are in the right fight, quitting is not an option. In your fights, the more you see the faithfulness of God, the power of his word, the power of the Holy Spirit, and how you endure, and you endure, and you thought you were going to die, and you didn't, and you thought you were going to get beaten, you didn't, and you stayed in there. Guess what happens over time? You go like this. You loosen up. All of a sudden, you start to go, hey, yeah, that's right, I didn't die last time. I guess God is faithful. I guess he shows up. I guess he shows up right on time when I needed him. Guess he is gonna be there, huh? Guess he doesn't leave me or forsake me. Especially in that third round, I started getting really tired and I remember looking up and seeing a minute 10. I'm getting tired, I look up, I see 40 seconds. <laughs> I look up, I see 30 seconds. I'm thinking, keep going, keep going, keep going, don't stop. Every number that got counted down, my emotions just went <laughs> Just kept coming up. My biggest goal in the whole thing was to persevere to the end. I didn't really care if I scored more points than he did. I didn't really care if I knocked him out. I cared about persevering and not quitting. Jesus was willing to endure the cross. He was willing to deal with scorn and embarrassment, shame, and, and the, the, the horrific nature of the sin of the world being inflicted upon him because the whole time that he was going through it, he kept his eyes upon the wind. Let me ask you, what is a victory and your fight look like? What does it look like? When the, the final bell sounded, I was such a weird combination of just really tired and feeling very, very happy. This is when your hands go up. I'm like, keep your hands up, look like a champ. And when I was in the corner, Mike just said, sit back and enjoy it. I just sat back and I just thought of all the work 
everything that had gone in, every challenge that we overcame. <laughs> All the little wins that led up to that big win. And I just couldn't help but smile. All I could do was just smile and drink it in. And that was one of the best moments of my life. Just feeling like I did it. I did it. It was cool to watch and, and to see the hard work pay off in the ring. You know, that wasn't something that Greg could have done a year before. It was an entire year of training that, you know, made what he did happen. We were just in a high school gym with, you know, several hundred people, but I felt like we were in the middle of Vegas, you know, or Madison Square Garden or something, and it was just the biggest, uh, biggest stage in the world because it was what God had called us to do. And so the magnitude was so much bigger than just that room. There was no doubt in my mind that every single person in the stands understood the message we were trying to communicate. At that moment, I didn't feel like I was a part of putting this on. Like, I felt like I was a part of truly, you know, being experiencing the event and being inspired, not just by the fight, but just what this whole thing stood for. When I was over there just trying to catch my breath, you know, Brian came over and he said something about, man, fighting's hard, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> Dude, you are awesome. Man. You are awesome. Man. You are awesome. You are awesome. You know, we were, we were hugging and talking. I just thanked them. I just said, man, thank you for being a part of this project. And he said, he said, man, he said, you either have a future as a fighter or a promoter. <laughs> or if you want to, you know, try to tap your hand in amateur boxing, I was like, man, you, you should do so. I fought other amateur fighters that, you know, didn't give me a mom's work as he did. So like I say, there's nothing better than having your hands raised at the end of a fight, other than the fact that the fight's over. And watching him walk around the room and telling people, you can do it, you can do it, you know? And I, could, I was just like, yes, you can, <laughs> because God's in it. If God's in it, you can do it. It was a good moment, it was a proud moment for the church, it was a proud moment for him, it was a proud moment for me being a part of it. Um, it was a good feeling. The inspiration that that moment had was incredible. That's, this is what you wanted, you know, so you got a victory. And it was just like, it's done. We did it. We really did it. So listen, the whole reason we did this is not for some kind of stunt. It's not a game. In fact, when it looked like a few days ago, this may not work out. I wanted to go after the hardest person I could find. For this reason, the things you're going through in your fight is no game. And I know some of you have marriages that are on the rocks. You've been battling addictions for a long time. All of us are in a fight. If somebody asked me, why do you want to do something so violent? And my answer was, Getting in for three rounds of boxing with gloves on isn't violent. Battling an addiction is violent. Trying to keep a marriage together is violent. Trying to not give up hope in your life is violent. I want you to know something. The reason that you can overcome whatever it is that you're in a fight with is not because you're tough, not because you have raw determination, it's because Jesus Christ went to the cross, took your sin upon himself, and won the ultimate fight. So now there's no fight that you can't take on, that you can't win. And if all we get tonight is go to the gymnasium and have a couple guys swing at each other, and it stops there, then we've lost. But if one person says, I'm going to give my heart to Jesus Christ. I'm going to give him my life. Then this whole thing was worth those terrible straight right shots that I took in my face in the <laughs> In every way, I was exhausted and spent. 
but just feeling like I had accomplished something huge. That was when I finally took a minute and like took my tunnel vision off when I had been focusing on the ring and I looked around the room and I was just overwhelmed by all the people that were there in the room and they were supporting it and they were affected by it and and you thought about the people that brought friends you know that maybe uh, were going through something in their personal life and I was just like overwhelmed by the magnitude of what had just been pulled off and it was everything it was supposed to be it wasn't the way we planned it but it was everything it was supposed to be and I was just I was like blown away at God in, in that moment and just what he's capable of. I felt as happy as if I had won the heavyweight championship of the world. Probably happier because I had knocked out a much bigger opponent. You know, when I came out hard at the beginning, I was thinking, what are you doing? Why are well, you gonna like burn yourself out? And I was also thinking, I didn't come into this ring to just play defense. I didn't just come into this ring to come out here and eke my way to the end. I'm given everything. And if I lose given everything, so be it. But I'm gonna let my hands go, I'm gonna Everything I've learned, everything I've worked on, I'm gonna unload it and unleash it right now. And let whatever happens, happen. I don't regret that. I earned my own respect today. I know God's proud of what I did. I know God's proud of what I did. He's got an obedient son. This is exactly what God wanted. He wanted to put me in there with somebody that was over my head. Somebody that was hot to handle. And forced me to persevere. I just pray that everybody who sees this will see themselves in it. And when you watch me take shots and when you watch me Sometimes grab and hold. When you watch me duck out of the way, when you watch me throw every punch, that you see that you can persevere too. That you see yourself in your fight, not quitting, staying in it, giving everything you have, never backing down, never quitting, going all the way to the end. You can win.